The 24-inch iMac redesign is the most effort we've seen Apple put into a Mac design in quite some time, and its design is only achievable as a direct result of the amazing M1 chip, which enables this ultra-thin iMac design with its low power consumption and energy-efficient chips, while also not sacrificing on power. However, despite all of that, after one month of use, I have a clearer picture of who this computer is really for, and some recommendations I want want to make along the way. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and prepare yourself because we have a lot to talk about with this M1 iMac after one month of use. And we are also so close to 180,000 subscribers. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this video, like you don't have to do it now, but if you watch the video and you got all the way to the end and you're like, you know what? That Greg guy, he's, he's quite tolerable. Well, isn't that enough for a subscription? I mean, what's a YouTube guy gotta do nowadays? All right, enough promotion. So one month later, what has changed with the M1 iMac? Well, some things are clearly the same. The design is still something that I think looks really great. The slim design with this blue color that I have selected is still bringing me joy every time I look at it, and it still hasn't lost any of its newness after one month of use. The white bezels are not an issue to me, and again, I appreciate how they look with this design. It is a fresh take that just gives off kind of a slightly more retro vibe of the classic Mac computers. This slim design is striking, especially if you compare it against just like a regular PC model monitor, which is usually much thicker than this entire like slim M1 iMac, and that still has a computer inside of it, not just a monitor. The thin and light design also has some practical benefits, like, you know, the iMac is super easy to pick up, and it's also easy to adjust on your desk, or bring it to a different desk setup, which I have done a few times already. And the design is also super easy to swivel around if you want to show your display to someone else, or if you're trying to access the port selection on the back. The ports themselves have been quite handy. Before, I was using the M1 MacBook Pro as my main computer, and that only had two Thunderbolt ports, while this mid-tier iMac model has two additional USB-C ports on top of that. Having those two additional USB-C ports has meant for the most part with this four port selection, I have been able to just use the ports on the computer without necessarily having to plug in a Thunderbolt dock at all times but this method does require a few adapters. I think most people would probably benefit from a Thunderbolt dock though, and even on the entry-level model, that one only has two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, so if you just add a dock there, you get a much larger selection of ports, like USB-A, HDMI, SD card slots, and even an Ethernet port, which you don't have to worry about on the mid-tier model because that does have it in the power brick, so that's nice. But this still doesn't negate the fact that what I'm used to for the iMac as a desktop class computer is more ports. And a computer that is this big in this form factor, just having four data connections, it just seems like it is lacking somewhere. It is a regression from the previous 21 inch iMac, which just had more connections. Again, it's probably fine in 2021 on a modern day entry level computer where less everyday users are even thinking about using cable connections, but I think this port selection would be quite a stretch on an eventual bigger redesign of the 27 inch or the M1X iMac. One thing I hope that bigger iMac does take though is the excellent speakers on the 24 inch iMac. These speakers provide clear room filling sound and because they have Dolby Atmos support, it means you can listen to Apple Music spatial audio right on your iMac's built in speakers or Dolby Atmos movies. I think the really cool eventual feature is the fact that the next version of Mac OS, you will be able to airplay directly to the iMac, meaning that you can take even more advantage of these speakers by using the iMac as sort of a very expensive home hub. The promotional pictures of the iMac in a kitchen seem a little bit less silly with that in mind. The display is also really great. The 4.5K Retina resolution is sharp. The display gets super bright at up to 500 nits of brightness, which is great for use even near windows. And the P3 wide color gamut makes this a really good display to recommend for people who need accurate colors like photo editors or video editors. The display isn't without its faults though, and after one month of using it, I've noticed that when the iMac is booting up or when you have an entirely black screen, you can see some panel unevenness in the backlight. I don't really think this is a 
big deal though, uh, because I really don't notice it unless I'm looking at a pure black display and that's just not how I use my computer. So I could nitpick it, I can see it. It does kind of bother me a little bit when I see it, but again, normal use, I don't see it. But yeah, for an all-in-one machine at $1,300, this thing is basically what I think most people looking for an all-in-one desktop want. Good displays, good speakers, a 1080p webcam that doesn't look like Super Mario Brothers, and it's packed with that M1 chip, which offers snappy and efficient performance and turns this entry-level machine into a pretty confident workstation. Okay, so I teased you before with some warnings and some gripes. Now, let me say this first. For most people, I still think the M1 machines, any of them, whether that's the Mac Mini, MacBook Air, all the way up now to this desktop class 24 inch iMac, these M1 machines perform well, and the processor isn't where my gripes come in. Again, the M1 is fast. I switched to the 24 inch iMac as my full time editing workstation, and even after this video, I do not plan on switching back to any of the Intel Macs or anything else until the M1X Macs come out. So this is a machine that I use and one that I really enjoy using. And for the most part, it handles the things I do like video editing, photo editing, and editing my podcast really well. However, I have run into some circumstances where I have hit some limits and those limits have to do with the max 16 gigabytes of memory. So normally for my YouTube videos, like the one you're watching right now, I would say that a normal video for me is usually around 10 to 15 minutes in length and with multiple streams of 4K. So this iMac handles that well on the H.265 codec, which is a compressed codec, so this iMac has to work a little bit harder, and that's footage from a Sony A7S III camera. However, on recent uh, videos, or a recent video that I posted, I was dealing with a lot more footage than I usually deal with. It was around 30 minutes in length and a lot more streams of 4K. Well, this is when I started to notice this iMac choking a little bit with memory. Render times were also longer than I wanted, and I experienced a couple slowdowns and some choppy segments in the timeline when I was using the highest quality preview settings, and I would have to just let certain sections completely render before I could really edit that footage. Again, I've experienced these problems on other Macs before, this is nothing new, but it was one of the first projects on one of the M1 Macs that really caused me some problems. So when I say don't be fooled, well, it's that this iMac, even though for daily use, its performance is probably going to be better than any other Mac on the market for most people, because again, the M1 is just downright snappy when doing basic tasks. But I also want to say it does have a limit, and if you think this is a pro-level iMac, well, don't be fooled. This is still very much intended to be a consumer-level product. And even though I am doing what I would consider pro work, at least for my job, I mean, YouTube is my full-time job, so to me, that is pro enough for me, it still doesn't mean that this product is going to work for all of you. And if the situation I described in my video editing process sounds like a scenario you often run into, uh, I would say that maybe this iMac isn't the right purchase for you. And it's made me realize that even though I love the design of this iMac and I was planning to use it for like a really long time, I too will eventually have to upgrade to the pro level iMac or pro level MacBooks when they eventually come out. The reality is the overwhelming majority of people watching this video don't need a machine like that. And this iMac is still going to represent the best value workstation machine that combines so many great features with good performance. And again, I still have no issue recommending it to people as long as you're aware of its limits. And again, for most people, you're not even going to hit those limits. Now, as for recommendations, there's a couple things I wanna say. I think the base level model is fine, as long as you're aware that there's some differences in the design, so that only has one fan. So technically, you're going to see some performance hits. In my tests in the last video I did, comparing the entry-level iMac and the mid-tier iMac, again, I saw some differences, not only with the seven-core GPU design, but also with the fact that the entry-level model just has one fan. Another recommendation I would make is that if you are getting this for video editing, photo editing, uh, maybe even development, uh, anything that I would say you're making money from, 
or you're getting started with all this stuff. You know, the eight gigabyte model, I get it. It's an attractive value, you know, $1,300 and you get all that and you walk out. Maybe that eight gigabyte model is enough for most people. If you're really on a budget, I don't think there's a better machine you could buy with eight gigabytes of memory. So it's still probably the one to get, uh, but I would probably recommend 16 gigabytes if you are doing more intensive tasks. I don't want you to hit that you know, limit I hit even sooner on eight gigabytes. So I really think 16 gigabytes is the safest recommendation. Again, if you're doing more of those intensive tasks for basic tasks, I think eight gigabytes will probably be fine. All right, everyone, but that is my update on the M1 iMac. One month later, still a great workstation, still my personal computer that I use over my old 27 inch Intel iMac because it excels in more areas than it fails. But let me know what you think about the M1 iMac one month later. Did you purchase one? Do you plan to purchase one? Or is the 16 gigabytes of max memory a deal breaker for you? Also, if you are considering buying an iMac, consider using one of my affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Really hope this video helped you out. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.